Hey guys, my name is Tristan Quachin. I am the Greenhouse Technician here at Valencia College East Campus. Um, and I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of the greenhouse and just highlight some of the cool plants we have. Enjoy. So first off, we have our orchid bench, which there are actually 20 to 30,000 different species of orchids or actually like 70,000 different um, varieties or cultivars. So the orchid family is quite large um, and you'll see kind of a little bit of variation among among them like this orchid right here unlike most orchids that are grown for their flowers ludizia discolor or the little jewel orchid is actually grown for its red foliage so unlike the other orchids that are grown for their flowers this one's grown for their nice red or burgundy leaves Further down, we've got couplet fern. This fern is actually endangered in the state of Florida. And a fun fact about ferns, um, so most people would probably try to call this a leaf. This is actually a frond. So if it's a fern, it's a frond. And if it's a tree or a bush, it has leaves, but ferns have fronds. Right here, is Monstera Deliciosa. This is probably one of the most recognizable plants in pop culture, um, TV, magazines, things like that. Also known as the Swiss cheese plant, which is pretty obviously, uh, pretty obvious why it's called that when you kind of see its leaves. I would hypothesize that I, I from my understanding, um, the plant has adapted to have these leaves to withstand high winds in its natural habitat. So you, you gotta think, if the plant had a completely, you know, a leaf that had no holes or no, um, no tearing in it, it would be less aerodynamic, right? So if it's in high winds, the leaves are more likely to break off, which is gonna damage the plant. So the plant has adapted to have these holes in the leaves to allow for more airflow. And that, that's the, the most popular theory. This tree right here is Cinnamonum cassia. This is actually where we get cinnamon from. So there's a couple of plants in the greenhouse that we have, um, that we get different spices and things like that from. We have nutmeg over here. I'll get to in a little bit. This right here, these three big trees are mangosteen which up until 2007, the mangosteen was actually banned from the United States. So in 2007, they lifted that ban. Um, the worry was that it would introduce Asian fruit fly into the marketplace. So here, along this bench right here, you'll start to see we've got different ginger, lots of different ginger. This right here is a ginger. Right here is ginger, golden brush ginger, uh, white ginger, shampoo ginger, Indonesian spiral ginger. So what I just wanna mention about all the different gingers is these actually grow from an underground storage organ known as a rhizome. So you can kind of see it on the shampoo ginger. These are rhizomous crops. So what happens is once the plant goes dormant, and by dormant, I mean all the foliage above ground will die off, it puts all its energy into this underground storage organ and then it'll re-sprout the next season. So I could go through and I could split up all of this rhizome and repot into separate pots and I would have a bunch of individual plants. And that goes, um, it's that way for just about every ginger. Here we have tropical pitcher plants. So you can see the variation among the pitchers. quite different, they're different cultivars. Um, this plant is actually carnivorous, so what happens is the midrib of the leaf, um, if you look right, let's see, here, you'll see how the midrib, oh, hang on. You'll see how the midrib has extended and modified itself, and it's starting to form the pitcher right at the end. So what happens is, bugs unsuspectingly will land right here on the lip, and they'll slip in and they'll fall. If you can see in there, you can kind of see the bugs in there already. They'll fall into this vat of goo, which pretty much dissolves and, and the plant 
will absorb the nutrients from the insects that way. So it's another, again, another way that the plant has adapted to get the nutrients it needs without having to go the typical route. And again, we have several different cultivars of that, so you can see the variation among them. Awesome plants. And we kind of got them growing up our um, little arch right here. So this tree is the miracle berry. So if you've never heard of miracle berry before, it is actually a little red berry that has contains a protein called miraculin. So miraculin actually interacts with your taste buds. And it called, I believe it was actually founded by a guy who ate a couple of the berries, started to drink some beer and noticed that the beer tasted uh, quite different. Some different trees we got right here is Aki, which is the national fruit of Jamaica. This fruit is actually toxic until it r fully ripens and opens up and releases the gas. Um, once it releases that gas, then it can be prepared and eaten. Like I mentioned before, we have nutmeg, another spice that we're all pretty familiar with. This is where we get, again, nutmeg or mace. Um, not to be confused with like pepper spray mace, but it's a more delicate version of nutmeg. Um, different fruiting trees. And right here we've got cacao tree. This is actually exactly where we get chocolate from. So it'll make this nice seed pod on the tree and that's what we process to get chocolate. So this is pretty much, I believe they can grow it down in Miami. Um, but I, I really don't think it can be grown outside really anywhere in the state, at least not year round. Miami would be my only guess to where it's possible, but from my understanding, they still grow it in greenhouses like we do here. Soursop, um, a lot of bromeliads, so just highlighting the variation among them. And then we'll get to our last bench, so the cactus bench. We've got a bunch of different cactus. These obviously need less uh, water than everything else in here. Right here is Peruvian apple or Caribbean apple cactus, I'm sorry. Again, this can be found in the state. This can be found in Florida naturally in a few counties. Um, and it pr produces a fruit very similar to a dragon fruit. We've got tequila agave, which is where we get tequila from for all you tequila drinkers, margarita drinkers. Um, what they'll do is once this plant gets quite large, like even bigger than that one, um, they'll come through and they'll chop all the leaves off and they'll take the core and they'll pretty much like roast it over a fire. Um, and they'll kind of just smoke it. That's kind of where you get that smoky flavor from. But fun fact, tequila can only be called tequila if it is made in Mexico. If you did not know that, it's a pretty cool fun fact. So like there are other alcoholic beverages that are pretty much the exact same thing, but if it's not made in Mexico, it cannot be called tequila. All right, and last but not least, probably one of the cooler trees in the greenhouse, the Brazilian grape, or I know it as Japotacaba. This tree is actually pretty unique in a sense that its fruit is coliferous. So most fruit will hang from a stem. It'll hang, you know, from a branch. This fruit actually will grow directly onto the stalk, right onto the, the trunk of the tree. There will be no um, like petiole or no stem, like you know how on the top of an apple, how it has like a little stem. This tree will not have that. It'll be like little grape sized berries just directly on the trunk of the tree, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and besides that, we've got, you know, tons of other stuff. I just wanted to highlight some of the big things. Um, yeah, and when campus opens back up, feel free to come by and, and see what we got to have to offer.